hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel so today we're going to be, we're going to continue with june 2021 computer science the database section b so the question is as follows the database system of a company has a table pc for details of its personal computers and a table employee for details of its employees with attribute name of obvious meaning no attribute entity in the table pc is unique however the table employee the entities of employer number for employee number and user id are unique to each employee table employee also contains details indicating the type of personal computers each employee use sample entries entries of the table are the following so they've given us the two tables the table pc and the table employee <coughs> Then tax theory, they say in your answer booklet, write down the S square data types you will use to implement the, your tables described above. So they wonder we should create the tables using S square. So let's do that. To create a table using S square, we say create table, we give the name of the table. Then for each field, we define what the data type data field can take. And then if we have any other specification, we specify. That means if it can take null values, if it's unique, and so on. So that's what we're going to do with the first table PC. We'll give all the feed names. Then we'll give the data type that you can hold. Here it has to be arrow. It's an arrow typing error. We give the data type that it has to be hold. It can hold. And now the constraint. So here you cannot take what? Null values. And you end, you close your bracket and end with a semicolon. So here you can discover that we have not specified our primary key. It's because here all the fields, none of them are unique. That's why we can't have a primary key. So for the moment, we have no primary key for the PC table. We'll do the same thing with the employees table. We'll give all the field names. we we'll give the data types. Then I'll we'll give the constraint. If you can notice, for user ID and employer number, we added unique. Because in our question, they told us that what in our employee table, we have two fields that are unique. That's what the user ID and the employer number. So that's why at the end, also here we add what unique. And now as a unique we can take what employer number as what our primary key so down here we said primary key is what employer number so that was that's that was the that was the a part the next let's go to the b using your favorite database management system create the tables indicated above so uh, 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 uh the database management system that we're going to be using is access we're going to use access we open create a blank we create a blank desktop database. We give the name. I can give the name sample twenty twenty one. Then I browse for it to be stored in my candidate folder. My candidate folder is on the desktop. Then I check for yes, my candidate folder. I open and I save it inside. Then I click on create. So it creates the database. Then we have to create a different table. So create a table. You come to create. You take table design, then you put in the field names and what the data type. Let's start with the first table, the PC, the PC table. The PC table, the first, the first field name that we have is PC type. PC type, and you can hold text, short text. The next is processor. It can also hold short text. The next is RAM in gigabytes. It can hold a number that's integer the next is disk size in terabyte and you can also hold a number then we said that you can it can't take null values so we we'll click for each field in the place of require we put what we type yes for each of the fields in the place of require type yes that means it can't take null values number place of require we type yes place of require we type yes so what what you can discover is that our table don't have a primary key yeah as i explained earlier because none of the fields are unique so i'm just going to save it like that so save control s then they're asking us for the name of the table, we'll give it PC, then OK. They say, they're telling us here that there is no primary key. 
that do you want the primary key to be created? No, we don't want that to create the primary key. So now I've created our table PC. So here's it. Let's do the same thing for the table employee. Employee, employee has as fields the first name, first name, which can is a short text, last name, which is also a short text, user ID, which is also a short text, employer number, which is an integer, that's number, PC type, which can take short text, processor, which can also take what short text. Then now, yeah, we, as we've said, our primary key will be what employer number. So click on it and make it the primary key. Then we save our table as what employee. Okay, so I've created our table. The next, they say for each table, add two rows of data. So we we'll create our table and we have to populate it. So let's populate our tables. Let's populate our table. Populate your table means you just fill your table. So you fill it, they say we should populate it, and then we add what two other rows. So I've added here what two other rows as you can see. You do the same thing with the PC table. With the employee, we have the PC table, you fill it, and then you add what two other new rows. So that's what the question there was asking us to do. That's for the B and C. Then the next, the next is print a copy of the content of your table save in a text file save it in the text file so to print the contents of your table so let's start with the employee table we we'll do what we we'll do a control with we'll control plus print screen then we'll open a word document and we we'll paste it in <coughs> to paste we we'll use control v shortcut so we can set our employee table has come we we'll do the same thing for the PC. Control print screen. Then we we'll go to Word and we we'll paste using Control V. So you can see now these are our tables. Then the examiner shall take the file and print it out for us. The next, that was all about tax three, tax four. Table employee is not normalized because it has known key details for the table PC. Your favorite database management system. Create the table indicated above. Add to PC an attribute that could be used as primary key. In your answer booklet, state what you did. So, they say our table, our, our relation is not normalized because in PC we don't have a primary key. So now they're telling us that we should add a fee that will be used as what? A primary key. So we'll go back to our design view. Let's add the field here. So I insert new row. So I'll call that fee what? The PC ID. And it should take auto number. Auto number is unique, can repeat. And then we'll make it our primary key of our table word PC. Then I save. I go to my design view, my data sheet view. So you can see that the, the table PC has come with values already inside because I we took what auto number. So it is what it is our primary key in our PC table. So what we did, that's what you have to explain in your answer booklet. Then the next question says, in your answer booklet, create the relation called EPC that associates each employee with one or more machine. Clearly identify the key of this relation. So what BEA is asking us to do is to draw an entity relationship diagram. So to draw an entity relationship diagram, there are three things that we have to take into consideration. We have to first know the different entity sets present in our relation and what and their attributes and then we need to know how 
the different entity sets are being related among themselves. So let's do it here. <coughs> so we start by indicating our entity set. Entity sets are represented in what? In a rectangle. What's an entity set? An entity set is just like a noun on which you want to collect data. That's what it is a person, place, concept, or thing on which what we, we intend to carry on what data. So here we intend to carry on data on the pieces, the, the, the personal computers in a company and what the different employees. So here PC and employee and employee are what our entities. So we start by indicating it with the rectangle, then employee. Now how is a PC related to what an employee? How are they related? It is related through the relation word owns. An employee can own what a PC. So now then we put now the attributes. The attributes are being represented using an oval. An oval. We put the attributes for PC and then we put the attributes for employee. Now and the last thing that we have to take in consideration is the, the, the cardinality. How many, how, many, how many employees can own a PC? So one employee can own a PC and a PC can be owned by what? One employee. It means that the relation is a one-to-one -one word relationship. So now the total that we should take care of the, the, the key feeds, that's the primary key. So for the primary key, we underline it. Our primary key here, we have PC ID and on this other table, we have what? Employer number. So we write and we underline. So that's what we had to do for the entity relationship diagram. The next question, C. They say give relation EP. Give, given the relation EP, modify your relation PC and employee with your database management system so that they are better normalized. That is so that they are at least in second normal form or in third normal form. Save your table. <coughs> so yeah, now the one that we should normalize what our tables. What we can discover that in the employee table, we have fees for PC type and processor. And in PC, we also have fees for what the PC type and the processor. So what we can do to normalize our table is that, first of all, to normalize our table, the tables have to be related. When we look at our PC and our employee table, there's no relation amongst them. There's no fee that is a primary key in PC and a foreign key in employee. So there's no fee that relates to of them. So what we'll do, we're going to create a field called PCID in, in the employee table. And now the PCID will represent what both the PC type and processor. So we're going to remove these two and in, uh, input what our PCID. So let's start by putting our PCID. We'll go to the design view. Put PC ID. The data type here is number. Then I save. We'll come back to our data sheet view. Okay, we'll look which PC has a PC type Apple and processor quad quad core. So we'll come and look. <coughs> Apple and quad core. So it is a PC with ID word five. So in the employers, here we we'll put word. Five. We'll do the same thing for the next HP and Core E seven. That's PC number two. The next is PC number four. The next is PC number three. So you verify and you feel it. So then now we delete. We save our table. We delete now these other two fees because the PC ID here represents what the different what computers, the different PCs. So putting living PC type and processor here will not be useful. So we remove them. Go back to our design view. We delete the processor, yes, and we delete the the field for the PC type, yeah. Then we save, Control X, come back to. So now our table has been normalized because what relates the employee table to the PC table is what through the PC ID. Then they say we should save our work to save, Control S to save shortcut. Then they say print a copy of your content of your table. Save a copy in your text file. So they still want a copy of our table. We we'll do control print screen. We we'll go to our text file. 
and we do control V there. We also do for the next table. Control print screen and go to our text file. Control V. Then this is this is a file that we are going to print out and yeah and all our tables will be there. So don't forget to save your file in your candidate folder, your text file. Candidate folder is found on the desktop. So I click, I go to desktop, I open my candidate folder, then I save it in. Yeah. So that was all for the database of computer science paper three, June 2021. Yeah. So if you learned something new, if this video helped you, please also share it with a friend. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That when I upload new other videos, you can be notified. Yeah, thank you.